and welcome back to my channel here at Tara Swiger. Today I am going to share with you my planner lineup for 2020. And if you're thinking, oh my gosh, that's a lot of planners, um, I'm thinking the same thing. So let's just go through them one by one. Okay, so to start with, my mom actually got me this and it is for my purse. So I always keep a planner in my purse. I already have it set up for 2020 because I like A, this page, B, this page so I can easily put in any um, appointment that comes up. You can see it was undated, so I numbered. We sat there at a coffee and numbered them together. This is my mom's birthday. This is my best friend and uh, my little foster babe's birthday. And so I like having this like readily available to see. Sometimes I put my mom's schedule as like a little dot on days she works 12 hour shifts and days she doesn't, just so I know. And then this has a I think it's just called a horizontal layout. So what I do, and I don't think I have a page done in here, is we well, can see I got this book around this day, so I was playing with my markers. Um, I write my anything that's scheduled here and my to-do lists here. I often just use this for my like to do while I'm out page. So an errands, you know, list each day before I leave the house, or if I'm going to go work, um, like at Starbucks or another coffee shop, or when I'm out of town, I will just take this planner and I'll open up my big weekly planner and I'll say, these are the things I need to get done today, but I'm gonna go to Starbucks, so I'll write them here. So I know what I need to get done. I open this up and plan in this um, kind of Sunday night. I do the first couple days and then again on Wednesday I'll look and I'll see what else I didn't get done and what needs to get done and then each morning I look at it before I sit down to work and if I'm going someplace I look at it, write it in here and then open this up and keep this open on the desk next to me so that I stay focused. That's one of my keys for staying focused as you work. So that is my purse planner. I love it. My mom got it for me. Um, it's got just the monthly stickers at the front and that's basically all it has is the next four months in it. So love that. Then my catch-all planner. So this is the planner that I used for the second half of last year, 2019, and it's what I'll use for the rest of this year. So let's take out, um, I'm going to be using these pages. Let me show you first. They're the whole month like this, I'm going to start using these to plan my video content. So to put in the Wednesday podcast and the Monday vlog, sometimes I do an extra video on Friday and um, I'm debating if I'm going to use it for my lives or just my YouTube or kind of both like do FB and then YT. So we'll see, but that's how I'm going to start using this because I like how it shows it to you in a list format, which is a little easier for me to understand sometimes than the month. I'll take it out a month at a time, just pulling it off. And um, what I do with my old planner things is if they're all filled in, I throw them away. That's it, I toss them. I don't need to look at them again. Now I'm gonna keep these around for a minute because I'm gonna use it to finish off my 2019 photo album. And um, I like it's very helpful to see the dates we did what, like we had a court date here for the girls. Um, I sometimes put the pool days on this or they're in here um, when, uh, our other foster babe came for a visit and we had a pizza night. Things I might have pictures of. Oh, we went to the splash pad that day with all the girls. So um, I definitely have pictures from that. So I use this to help me put my photo album in order. And I've printed all my photos for the year, but I have not yet put them in their album yet. So I'm going to keep these around for that. But then I will just recycle them. Um, I might keep, if I really, really like this piece... I might cut it off and keep it either in a photo book or in a frame or something. So that's an option. Like I really like this November one that says joy. I love this. I might cut this into a card um, and then put paper on the back of this. Okay, so let's take the rest of this. That was my social media plan for November. Let's take out December all the way back through. We'll leave this, we'll leave this because um, I've started writing in some special dates. So there we go. I don't see any reason for me to have these old sheets like on my, on. I'm never going to flip through them again. Uh, so I just take them right off because I do something else for memory keeping, which I'll show you in a minute. So now I have January in here. I only had in here this week. So I'm going to add in the rest of January, which I have right here. 
these are my then extra sheets and uh, video plans after that. So I'm gonna take the rest of January and add it in. So I have week by week of the next month. And then February, that's beautiful. I've got that side of the calendar. So I'll put this side of the calendar. And then I'm gonna put all of the weeks of February because I don't like to get, I keep this paper stored in my bookshelf. I don't like to keep getting it in and out, but I also, what I'm, what I'm trying to avoid is having too many months in here at a time. Now you just saw, I took out basically September through December. I had been all at once in here, but that was just so I could show you the flip through. I don't like to keep the next quarter in here all at a time, but I do like to have the calendars. So I've got January and February, and then when it comes to March, I'm gonna put the monthly calendars so that I can write anything, kind of do pre-planning there. And then, this is the back sheet of the calendar, putting one of these sheets, which is from another planner, um, just to make notes on anything I wanna remember for March, as March is coming up. So I could put it in between the calendar, I think I'll just put it after the calendar. So like right now, I was asked to um, teach a gig that is the end of February, beginning of March. So if I wanna make any notes about that, anything they tell me that I need to keep in mind, I'm gonna write that here. Um, and I'm gonna need to actually remember to put it on the on the big calendars. Um, anything else that is coming up in March or I'm thinking about doing in March, I'll put it on a post-it note and then I can make any notes about it, like people I need to contact or questions I need to ask or whatever, um, things I need to get in March any of that stuff. So then we're going to do April 2. So I also have May and June. The rest of May and then June's calendar and then that's it. And then this calendar, that's why I went to June, this planner was July through June. It was like a school year calendar. So I'll actually have to get a new classic planner after June. Um, but I'll go in and put in those weeks as they get closer. I, that way they're not all in here. Because what else I have in this planner is video ideas. So I keep, I'm gonna do a section, sectioned off here of like social media ideas. So video ideas, podcast ideas, Instagram ideas. And then I just have some extra note sheets and some of these which help me prioritize projects. Like what are the big steps of it? Um, I use these a lot in my planning projects. And they have this great dot grid on the back of them. And then I just cut down some paper that I bought from a bigger size that was dot grid for my bigger planner. I just cut it down and put it in here. There's no point in buying more paper. Um, so. That's what it looks like. So I say this is my catch-all because this is where I do my weekly planning. This is where I keep track of everything morning by morning. When I get up, what do I need to do today? What are the appointments for today? So at the beginning, like you saw in my flip through at the beginning of the week, I will put down all appointments in, um, I haven't done this weeks yet, in like boxes at the top and then I'll do the to-do list you see today's to-do list is already there and um and then usually what I'm grateful for and what I'm reading some version of that and then the weekends tend to be pretty low-key because I don't work so sometimes I'll put a sticker here or I'll make a note of something we agreed to do but that's kind of it so and I keep track of my priorities here and this if we do any budgeting, it will be in this one. Um, my work planning is back here in ideas. And then what I do is on a week I'm working on this, I pull it up and put it in here. Sometimes I'll keep these video ideas in the monthly layout, like here, so that I can um, then assign them a date. I'm gonna use this to keep track of all the videos on the days they're going live. And so what I'll do is I pre-plan my videos usually for the next month podcast episodes and vlogs and then when it comes time for the week I just add them in when I actually need to do them right so I'm shooting the vlog here um and but that calendar tells me when they'll post so this calendar I'm going to go back to putting I'm going to keep all the events in it like I did before and I'm trying to decide if I'm going to put my monthly bills that are coming out automatically I like to see them somewhere I'm either going to put them here or in this one that stays with me all the time We'll, we'll probably try it in both places and we'll see which one I pay attention to more because that's what I like to do. I like to like figure out what is the 
where's the best place to have it. This is kind of small to write them in, so we'll see. But I need it someplace where I'm reminded, oh, that's going to come out this week. Um, so small planner, classic happy planner, um, as my catch-all every Sunday night, every morning, and then this to take with me. And then that's basically it for actually planning. So, however, I have a couple other happy planners I am using, but this is all I'm using on a daily basis. So the other planner I started using this year that I love is my recipe planner. So this is a classic size recipe planner. This is actually the cover. Every day is a fresh start. Let's flip that over so you can see it. But I didn't want that on the cover <laughs> in my kitchen. I don't know why, I just wanted this. Um, so I flipped it over and now this is my cover. I think, yeah, that's the inside of that one too. I like it. It's We're vegetarian, so I just feel like it's extra vegetarian-y. Um, I need to put belongs to the Swigers here. And then I have been, um, so this has just great kitchen conversions. It has different sections with really cute um, illustrations on each. Let me show you illustrations, um, the small dish illustration. How cute is that? So I put my grandma's recipe card, the only recipe card I have from her. I mean, she's still living. I can have her make me some more here. And I started to write it out here, but so I don't lose it because this was just floating around my kitchen and this no-bake cookies are my absolute favorite. And then I wrote a bunch of, um, let me find them for you, of our holiday recipes. I wanted to do on green paper this holiday. Basically everything we make every holiday, but the the recipe is online or deep in a cookbook. I pulled it out and I wrote it down as I made it. Let me tell you this is so much easier to work from this than to work from like three different cookbooks or especially from your phone. So if you're working from your phone, you have to constantly like either turn it on so it doesn't turn off and then the battery runs out or somebody texts you and it goes away and your hands are sticky. So it was so great having them like this. Um, which are some of my favorite cookies. They're from a cookie book. So I'm gonna keep adding to this is what I'm telling you throughout this year. Every time I sit down to make one of our favorites, I'm gonna write it down and add it to it. So this recipe book is not gonna get recipes we're trying for the first time. They're gonna get recipes that we're making for like the fourth or fifth time. Cause we have so many of those and now they're across several books, lots of websites. I'm always paranoid websites. Like the website that has this cheese ball, this pup recipe was published on their website back in like 2011. And so that website might go away. They might stop paying for their hosting one day. I don't wanna lose it. Have, um, like I have recipes across I use maybe six or seven cookbooks regularly. It'll be nice to have our favorites in here. It also stays open up on the cookbook stand. I, get, I do this a lot and set it on the stand. It's just so much easier to manage than a, like the cookie cookbook is constantly, it's like perfect bound and it's always trying to close on me. So I'm using this, adding recipes to it. I'm gonna try to do it at least once a week, add the recipes that are our faves that we're gonna make to this. Um, well, like when we do our meal planning at the beginning of the week. Another thing I'm gonna do that I didn't show you because I haven't done it yet is um, each week in my catch-all planner, use a half size sheet paper. Now they have some that say meal planning and then each day, but I already have this paper and so I'm gonna use what I have and I'm going to pry this one put meal planning at the top and write down um, what we plan to have each day of the week. Right now our meal planning is like, we come up with five to seven meals, we buy the groceries for them, but we don't assign them days. What happens when we're really, really overwhelmed with the kids is then we just get pizza or we just make PB and J's and we have the food, we have the veggies to make a meal and even quick meals. Like a lot of the things we make just take 20 to 45 minutes, but we don't do it. So looking at the, like what's coming up for the week and then making an easy dinner on a night that we know we're going to have a long day, I hope will help us be better at cooking when we have kids. Because we're really great at eating at home and cooking all of our meals when it's just us. I mean, even with kids, 90% of the time we're cooking or eating at home, but we're not great at making the meals that we bought all the veggies for. So that's what we're going to work on when we have kids. So that's, again, my catch-all. This is recipe planner. Okay, so now for the third, the, the last planner I'm gonna be using, um, not every day, but every week, is I'm going to use this big happy planner, maybe turn it inside out so this is on the outside, and put stickers on it that say 2020, and I'm going to use it as my photo album. So this is my plan, I haven't done it yet, so we'll see. I'm gonna use the horizontal layout pages and you can print pictures. If you print pictures four by six, but four up, 
So there's like four across. They fit perfectly. They fit perfectly in these boxes. So what I'm gonna do is probably on Sunday when I do my next week's planning, I will get my pictures from this last week and look at my planner and what we did, right? So I can look at this and kind of get an idea of what we did and then pull out the pictures um, and put them in here with some stickers or um, up. what I'm gonna do is less stickers because I don't have that many big stickers. I'm not buying anything new for this. And I'm just gonna write in the boxes. And then what I plan on doing when I print the pictures is um, each like Friday or Saturday night, I just send them to Walgreens and I go pick them up because you can get them, they always have a, they always have like a 40% off coupon at Walgreens for prints. Um, I'd love the Canon selfie printer to like print them at home, but until I have that, totally cool with printing them at Walgreens and then um, once a week putting them in here. And um, I'll probably fill out the monthly planner with like what we did and um, like specific dates and then on the weekly layouts have photos and other stuff. So we'll see how that works. I'm going to try it for the month of January, see if I like it. If I don't, I can always stop. And then one last, one last planner <laughs> is, uh, so that's memory keeping, which to me is like just total, that's not planning. That's memory keeping. That's totally different. And then this, which this is actually its cover, but I flipped it over. I just don't love that quote. I flipped it over. This was the inside and I put these stickers, um, Amy Tangerine stickers on it. Um, this is my planning for the yearbook. So I told you in a recent podcast episode, or maybe it's upcoming. Anyhow, it's coming out the week of um, January 8th. And it uh, about my, how I plan. I usually use a notebook to look back at 2019 to plan for 2020. And then I do my quarterly, um, my quarterly like roundups, like like reviews and monthly reviews in the same place so that I can keep going back to the same place over and over. I haven't started to fill this out yet. That's actually what I was gonna work on after I make this video is I'm gonna go to the coffee shop and fill it out. Um, so I have, this was a page that was like at the end, you know, of like the coming month that said like this, but for like July, this was a book. This planner is a monthly layout, classic planner. And so it comes with those sheets that are to-do lists. Like, let me show you an example. It, like after the monthly layout, it comes with sheets like this to plan your month, to put your goals for the month and the priorities, which is why I thought this was a good layout for my um, my planning, like my overview. And then it has a bunch of sheets like this. So instead of the monthly layout, you have this, which has two, four, six, eight um, checklists on each page, seven on this page. And um, this, I might use these in my regular planner instead of the regular weekly layout, depending on what this situation is, how much I'm working, kids, all that. I like this idea, um, but this is especially good. I'm going to just use these sheets, you know, in any planner, take them out and use them anywhere. So what I have is I've gotten several sheets in here. So this, okay, we're not ready to talk about this yet, is a 20, I, I covered up, it said July, I covered it up, I put 2019 on it. I'm going to like review 2019 here. This is just an actual note sheet for another project. Um, and then I'm gonna make a list. I put this little airplane here. I'm gonna make a list of the places I visited in 2019, what I'm celebrating in 2019, what the big picture ideas were in 2019. Um, more review of my year here. Uh, and then take use my map making guide to just take notes in here, um, planning for the new year. So I just put regular notebook paper, um, well, um, dot grid happy planner paper in here that I had cut down. And then as I think of to do's with any projects, I'll list them and I'll just do my planning in here. And then, um, another like lined note paper and then January and then what I'm working on in January and the month, I'm trying to still think about how I'm going to use this monthly layout. I'm not sure yet if I'll use it as a bill tracker or a probably not social media, but probably project tracker. And then um, my goals for the month, this will be each month. I'll sit down at the beginning of the month, fill this out. I usually just do this in a notebook, but I love this beautiful thing. And because it was, it was an originally a July through December, it was super, super on sale because I bought it in December and it started the previous July. Um, 
So, and plus it's got these great to-do lists I can use in this planner or in my catch-all planner. Um, and that's what every month looks like. So right now I have every month in here. I'll probably just take out the last six months. Um, and I took out, it had, it has one of these for every single week of the month. I took most of them out. So each month only has one, so it's not so thick. Um, so every month has this page and then a to-do list page. And then I'll take out the extras and go right into the next month. And so I'll be adding notes and ideas and quarterly reviews and monthly reviews, all of that to this. This will be my like at the beginning of the month reviewing where I am and the progress we're making. If we do, um, is it's like, I've always done that kind of a notebook. I've just done it in a moleskin. And this year, I, I, what I like about this is I can take things out and move them around and like even move them into my daily planner so that I can keep track of what I'm working on, right? So if I do a list of like um, goals and then projects and then the to-dos for those projects all while I'm sitting here, I can pull this out and put those to-dos right in, this is April, right in April in my catch-all planner and have it front of mind. So. That is a look at all of the planners I am using this year. I, again, I'm really just planning in two and I am keeping track of other stuff like my memories and my recipes and my quarterly reviews in other happy planners. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please ask below. I don't remember if I said everything I was going to say, <laughs> but let me know below if you have any questions. Be sure to like it if you like it and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Leave a comment below telling me what you want to see more of. If you like, um, if you like any of these ideas and what you're doing in your own planning, I want to know. Thanks so much and have a great day.